Ada Emma teaches us some basic first aid skills. Well, imagine, imagine that you're one of the 250,000 people who are involved in road traffic collisions every year. You are unconscious and not breathing. There is a very strong chance that no one around uh, will have the basic skills required to provide emergency first aid. Now, first guest of the evening is a nurse and mother who understands the importance of immediate and appropriate first aid in a medical emergency. Founding First Aid for Life uh, emerged where she was shocked to discover a huge variance in the quality of first aid training providers. Here to talk us about the importance of first aid training, please welcome Emma Hammett to the show. Welcome to Living the Life. Thank, Thank you very us. much indeed. Thank you so much, Emma. Uh, now, you're a first aid trainer, aren't you? Yes, I am. So I, I imagine on a day-to-day -day basis you're teaching people how to administer first aid. What's the most common thing that people need first aid for? Choking. I think that's the thing that mm. people worry about most. And fortunately, it's something that um, we can help with. So the majority of the time, it, it, it's quite rare to, to have a fatality following choking. Sadly, there was one um, high-profile case recently. But generally, mm. it's, um, it's something that if you're calm and collected and you know what to do, that you can get in there and you can help. That's the key thing about being calm and collective because... It's just one of those things where, where the natural human instinct is to panic, right? Mm, so, yes. someone, someone's choking or, or, or something's happening to them. You know, you, you're just going to panic station, right? And if you're panicking mm. and they can't breathe, yeah. then that's going to make it worse, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. they will pick up on your panic and it will make it harder for them. The same if they're seriously ill and they're going into shock. Mm -hmm. mm. The calmer you are, the calmer they will be and the better it is for them. So it's about equipping yourself with the skills and the confidence yeah. so that if something happens, you know what to do. Mm. Now, this, this is, I mean, choking, it sounds so, it sounds trivial in a way, you know, choking, it's something, it just, it's not it's not probably what's on people's minds when they think about what they might need first aid for. But it's a really uh, uh, common thing. Actually, 900 people a year choke mm. to their deaths mm -hmm. um, and 2,500 uh, asphyxiate from blocked airways. Mm -hmm. So this is quite a common affliction. And what's the most co I mean, we'll, we'll go into detail later, but as a first aider, I mean, when you talk to people who want to learn more about dealing with this, is it quite straightforward? Uh, yes, dealing with choking is, is pretty straightforward. I'll take you through it later. Uh -huh. um, and it's obviously sort of choking with little ones and parents when they're starting to wean their children that they're worrying about choking. Mm -hmm. But we'll cover things like heart attacks as well, if you'd like to, so that, you know, again, that's a, mm. that's a concern yeah. for yeah. people. What would you do if somebody was in front of you looking seriously unwell? Uh -huh. mm. How would you help them? Because, yes, everyone says, well, I'll phone for an ambulance, but... It might be a while before the ambulance arrives. Mm -hmm. mm. And what are you going to do whilst you're waiting for the ambulance? That's so absolutely. we can cover that if you'd yeah. like to. No, absolutely. I, I think that would be very good. And I, and I think I'll be joining you uh, to, to, to learn uh, uh, this I've as well. I've got my mannequins. We've got the mannequins, <laughs> I understand. I've got my mannequins. So I'm looking forward to that. Hands on training. Yeah, hands on training. Absolutely. absolutely. I mean, just to find out, my daughter, my, my six year old daughter, uh, learned this in, in Scouts. So apparently, the, the Scouts movement that she's teaching kids. So, so she, 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 she picked on her five year old brother. Mm -hmm. And just said to him, right, just pretend you fainted, and she put him on the floor. And I was actually learning from her, which, which was remarkable. I'm picking up the skill set from, 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 from a young child. But, you know, is, is, is that something that, that, that's encouraging, that we should encourage, yes. starting from, from We teach age? in a lot of schools. In fact, we teach in an awful lot of Muslim schools, mm. which is great. Yeah. Um, but we teach in schools generally. My slight concern about them trying to bring it in as part of the curriculum is that people will do lip service to it. I do sadly get calls from head teachers that say, we've got an assembly full of children on such and such a day. Could yeah. you come and teach 200 children for half an hour so we can tick the box? Well, they don't say so we can tick the box. But teaching yeah. first aid in schools sh should be done and it should be done properly. Yeah. Or otherwise, we're the only European country that doesn't teach first aid as part of the driving instruction. Wow, oh. that's extraordinary that when you think about it. massive. Yeah. I mean, that would be a great time. The campaign currently is all about getting first aid into schools, and I yeah. support that fully, so long as it is done properly. Absolutely. Yeah. It shouldn't be a box-ticking thing. You said, certainly mm. shouldn't have to teach 200 people in 30 minutes. I mean, I remember I did a first yes. aid course about something like three or four years ago now, which means my new one is due, right? Do come and join me. Right? OK. <laughs> so uh, I think yeah, this is one of the things that people don't know. You have to renew a first aid course. It's not something you can just do once. And, and refresh let leave it. it. There and refresh it, absolutely. But I think the group that mm. I was in, there were maybe 20 of us, 
That's on one big. first aider. I know, but it, he spent a good four hours or so with us. It might have been longer, actually, now that I think about it. But it is a very useful skill set. And it, it, there's a lot of people who just kind of, you know, they put this, they kind of put this off, or as you say, they don't take it very seriously because it doesn't. It's it's about being being proactive, isn't it? It's about mm. preparing for that. Uh, hopefully unlikely scenario but you must be prepared you need the confidence a lot of people are worried that if they suddenly are skilled up mm. that they'll be called upon and that, that there's an obligation then mm -hmm. to use the skills there isn't an obligation yeah however if you have the skills then you have that inner confidence and if somebody that you love suddenly yeah. needs yeah. your help you are then ready and able to possibly save their life so it can make a real difference sadly we have quite a few people who come on the course when something's gone wrong yeah and they said i wish i had done this earlier yeah well, it's interesting what you you made there about people perhaps not willing to come forward i mean do you find that through through experience people are, are, are reluctant to learn I mean, never on our courses no. no people are scared beforehand but mm. once they've come in yeah and they've learned the majority of first aid is common sense, mm -hmm. yeah. but it's common sense that you need to be told. Yeah. Mm. So things like treatment for burns, yeah. I mean, I think you'd probably be able to tell me, treatment for burn? Cool running water? Cool, yeah, I, was, <laughs> cool run I was thinking vinegar for some no, reason. No, 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 no I was nothing thinking drop fancy. and roll, but yeah. it's not a burn, yeah. that's a fire. Both of you do come and join me on another yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that refresher is too <laughs> short. I, I seem to remember there's a lot of acronyms in play as well. You know, so oh, like, that's, yes. Is that old hat? Well, like rice, I remember rest, yes. ice, compression, elevation. Super, if you remember it, <laughs> yeah. you remember what it's for, that's yeah. perfect. But let's not get the acronyms yeah. too confused. Of what course. I would prefer is that when we teach it, we teach you so that you understand what you're doing and why. Mm. So that if something happens, you haven't got to think, oh my goodness, is it rice or is it price or is it... Yeah. You are thinking, yeah. well, actually, my priority here is the quiet one. If there's multiple casualties, going mm. back to your road traffic accident. So the priority yeah. is the quiet ones, because the ones that are shouting have clearly got an open airway and they're breathing. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. A, and there are, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, I just keep, the acronyms, they keep coming back to me somehow, but this is something not to get too bogged down in. Is that what you're saying? Don't like, get hooked up in yeah. acronyms, because I don't want you worrying when, if mm -hmm. you imagine you are trying to keep yourself as calm as possible in yeah. the situation, I would like you to have all the information that you need so that you understand what you're doing and why. Mm -hmm. What are your priorities and why are they your priorities? Mm -hmm. Rather than trying to think up oh, which mnemonic is where and yeah. uh, because that's where things go wrong. And yeah. some of those, and if some it's in slightly yeah. the wrong order, well, yeah. who cares? So long as your priorities are there, your breathing is your number one priority. If yeah. they're not breathing, they're dead. Yeah. Bleeding's up there too now. Wow. The new Resuscitation Council right. guidelines came out last week and they're yeah. putting catastrophic bleeding as a big priority as well. So, you know, if, if, if something has happened, so if you're a tree cutter and, um, and you've had a really nasty accident, if you're not breathing but you're losing massive yeah. amounts of blood, then we seriously need to apply direct pressure to, yeah. to stop that. And yeah. maybe in that situation, they've now suddenly brought back tourniquets that have been gone for a long time too. Right. Okay. So breathing and bleeding um, are your number one priorities and, and burns up there too. Broken bones? Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I think I might. <laughs> anyway, listen, though, stay with us. We'll talk a little bit more about this as the show progresses. Indeed. Fascinating information so far. Anyway, we're going to take you to another story now. Uh, now, a 12.03 carat, mm. carat diamond. That's very precise. Right? 12 I know, 12.03 yeah. carat diamond could fetch a record $55 million, 55. half of his salary, <laughs> when it goes under the hammer at Sotheby's auction house in Geneva on Wednesday. Ayan Baudin has more. A 12.03 carat blue diamond could fetch a record $55 million when it goes under the hammer at Sotheby's auction house in Geneva on Wednesday. The fancy vivid blue diamond, Blue Moon, discovered in South Africa in January last year, is the largest cushion-shaped stone in that category to ever appear at auction. Sotheby's put its estimated sell price between 35 to $55 million, which at the higher end would mark an all-time record for the sale of a diamond at auction. The undoubted highlight of this auction is the famous Blue Moon diamond, estimated at 35 to $55 million. It weighs 12.03 carats, which is a huge size for these, amongst the rarest of all diamonds. 
and it was discovered two years ago at the Cullinan mine in South Africa, which is effectively the only reliable source of blue diamonds in the world. On the eve of that event, Sotheby's competitor Christie's is set to auction off a cushion-shaped 16.09 carat pink diamond that is tipped to fetch up to $28 million. The current record for a blue diamond belongs to the Zoe Diamond, which in November 2014 fetched $32.6 million in New York. The stunning 9.75 carat pear-shaped diamond was bought by a private Hong Kong collector. According to Sotheby's auctioneers, the price also set a new world auction record for price per carat for any diamond. Wow, that was huge! That was a huge diamond. <laughs> That's that was a... <laughs> I mean, I, I still... I'm not going to let my wife watch today's show. <laughs> no way. Yeah, that's one thing I've never bought my wife was a diamond ring. Really? Yeah, I don't, I don't know how well, I got away with it. Only that. half your salary. It's only half it? my salary. Get involved, I might mate. as well. <laughs> 55, 55 million. million dollars. 55 million dollars. That's extraordinary. Gosh. Um, yeah, you're with us as well, right? 50... I am. I'm looking. <laughs> <laughs> Husband, if you're watching. <laughs> we want that version that we saw in the video. That's what we're after. I know. It was snaggy tight, though. <laughs> now, obviously, we're, we're talking about first end. We'll yes. get into more detail. I'm looking forward to this practical as well, a little bit later on as well. But uh, you mentioned the three kind of main things mm. to bear in mind um, were... Bre uh, sorry, which is my Breathing. Me? Breathing. Bleeding, Bleeding and burns. Bleeding and burns. Breathing into three Bs. So three Bs. Yep, three Bs. Sorry. Sorry, acronyms. acronyms. Always, <laughs> acronyms. Always a B. Now, I know actually, actually a friend of mine who was on the course, he reminded me, like, you shouldn't always focus on the acronyms because some of them overlap with other things. So yep. one of them was ABC, which is something to do with circulation, if I remember. Airways, Airways breathing. breathing. And the circulation stroke circulation. CPR. Right, see, yep. there you go, ABC. Yeah. ABC. Yeah. Sort of there. But ABC in sales... You're good on yours. <laughs> <laughs> but most people forget, right? Yeah. Um, but ABC in sales means always be closing mm -hmm. and ABC yeah. in other professions means loads of different things. We well, so don't always be closing if you're doing a CPR, right? Really. No, no, you certainly won't be closing. <laughs> so this is the thing. So it's another, it's another reason to get away, but the three Bs are good to remember, as you say. But you mentioned broken bones. Why, why were you so like... Yeah. I mean, I remember we're well, just broken, joking, Well, you're not still. going to die from, from a broken bone, really. Really? So if... Yeah, if it's broken, bone, people think hospital, about right? first aid and yeah. they think about fancy bandaging and all that. But let's yeah. go back to life-threatening injuries. Mm -hmm. If we're talking life-threatening and you've got someone lying there that's not breathing and someone that's lying there that's broken their arm... Uh -huh. There's no, there's no, yeah, there's absolutely. And I suppose no. with the arm, you're yeah. in agony, but you could easily transport. You're them. not going to die from that. Yeah, you're not yeah. going to die from that. I mean, it, yeah. the bleeding associated with an over open fracture. Potentially, mm. but it's the bleeding yeah. that's causing the problem. Okay. And people talk about spinal injuries and get all hooked up about that. But yeah. again, if you've got someone with a spinal injury, A, you don't know for certain unless you've got an X-ray. Yeah. <laughs> um, or they're in a very strange position and mm -hmm. you've got a hunch. Um, but if they're not breathing... Yeah. then yeah. you're yeah. going to want to do CPR on of course, them. True. Of course, of and course. And like, CPR is something we're quite uh, curious to talk about because there's, um, there's a whole bunch of things in play, but I guess we'll continue the conversation no, absolutely. after uh, we go to this. We'll go to our first break ah. of the evening. We are going to the first break of the evening, so don't go anywhere. We're going to see you on the other side of this. <laughs> Welcome back. Before the break, we were talking with Emma Hackett, H Hammett, I beg your pardon, uh, about the importance of first aid. And we're learning a lot, we're honestly. It's been a long time since I learned. I mean, you, you, you've actually studied this, yeah, but for yeah. me, this has been quite nice. It's brand new. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to it because later on, we're going to be getting a dummy out. Yeah, very and, soon, and, and, actually. And I'll be practicing. In a moment, we're going to have a dummy. Yeah. We're going to learn how to do all sorts of things. We're going to learn. C uh, we've got uh, Emma still with us as well. Mm. Uh, so we're going to learn CPR. Is that mm -hmm. what we're going to learn? Yep, cardiopulmonary resuscitation for anyone that doesn't know. So that's your heart. Yes. Your lungs uh -huh. yep. and resuscitating. That's what Excellent. it means. That's CPR. Fantastic. And on a so uh, I mean, do we have statistics? Do we know how many people require this and how life saving this could be? Uh, it makes a massive difference. Wow. So CPR mm. on its own, if somebody has a cardiac arrest in the community, uh -huh. yeah. their chances of survival are actually not that great. They're six to seven percent, roughly. Wow. However, if there is of a survival, survival. Gosh, in the okay. community. Yeah. It's, it's higher in, in hospitals, in yeah. the community. However, if you can use a defibrillator, and I'll show you one of those later as well, yeah. if you can get a defibrillator on the chest within three minutes of that person being unconscious mm. and not breathing, yeah. then your odds jump from 6% to 74%. Wow. wow. That's why Gosh. there are more and more defibrillators being made available mm -hmm. in public areas for everybody to use. 
fantastic. Mm. And they talk to you. They... And you can't do any harm if you use it because it won't let you shock if the yeah. person doesn't need it. Oh, we're wow. going to have to have a look at this and well, see yeah, exactly I mean, yeah. what's yeah. I love yeah. the, the built-in safety as yeah. well, that yeah. it wouldn't work unless it was absolutely necessary. Absolutely. So we're going to come straight back to this and get into curious, but yeah. i tell you what I'm really curious about. Mm. This first aid training kit that we absolutely. have right now, we've got Emma still with us, okay. and uh, we've got some uh, first aid gear actually around us as well right now. So Emma, just before we start working on those, just, to, just give us a little guidance about what these are. Okay, these are resuscitation mannequins. Okay. okay. So these are what we use in our courses. I mean, we've, we've got practical courses at First Aid for Life, and we've got online courses as well, mm -hmm. so right. people can't make it to a practical course. On our practical courses, we always have lots of mannequins because then you can practice and see mm. how hard you have to push on the chest yeah. and how hard you have to blow into them right. in order to... to do what you need yeah. to do. Yeah. So you can show us that right now, I guess, I right? can show you that right now. Okay, so what should we start with? I would suggest we actually start with something that's fairly common. Okay. Someone having chest pain okay. or looking like they're having a heart attack. So okay. if I talk you through that, okay. so right. you're looking far I, I, I too healthy. Right I, 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 I feel like I'm, I'm palpitating. And, um, <laughs> so uh, what would you be like? Um, what, what might your symptoms be? Have you any idea? I'd probably be sweating. I'd yeah. feel uh, a, a tight kind of... Possibly. You pain may or arm. may not yeah. have any chest pain at all. Right. So a quarter of people don't have chest pain. And in fact, if you mm. were diabetic, yeah. it's quite possible that you wouldn't have chest pain because your nerve endings are not as, right. as sensitive as they were before. Yeah. So pale, cold, clammy, feeling sick, feeling thirsty. They talk about a sense of impending doom. Ah. You feel the worst you've ever felt in your entire life. Okay. Wow. And it may have been brought on by stress, yeah. by a sudden shock or something. Mm -hmm. It may have come on at rest, yeah. um, which is very worrying when it comes on at rest, because that's far more likely to be yeah. a heart attack rather than angina. Oh. Or maybe you've rushed to get here. OK, so you're looking pretty rotten. So what are we going to do with you? So I, I need to get on the floor, lie down, or...? I wouldn't have you lying down no. because you were breathless. OK. OK. Now, if you imagine that you're lying flat, imagine you've got the worst cold you've ever had. Yeah. If you're lying flat on your back... Can't breathe. You're going to make, ah, it, so we're going to make it harder for you to breathe. Yeah. Yeah. So upright. So anybody that's had breathing problems, no matter what the cause, yeah. upright is always easiest. OK. So, so you would be sitting down on the floor. Do you want to come and sit down on the floor? I'm the, the live dummy right now. Right. Okay. So, <laughs> Right. No, I am a dummy, but here we go. So, <laughs> so you would be so sitting okay. down Same on the bed. floor like okay. this, okay. okay? I would be reassuring you yeah. and, and everything. I would also ask you to get an ambulance on okay. the way. Um, you, and you, I would also see... I, I'd be expecting you to cheer me up. <laughs> yeah, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I'm just going to get the ambulance. <laughs> yeah. no, I, I shouldn't joke. I shouldn't, because it's serious. It is serious. Absolutely. Okay. So I would be... Um, Talking to you, finding out if it had happened before, and okay. if you've been prescribed a GTN spray, which if you've okay. got heart condition, you would have a spray. Okay. In this situation, you would be spraying it underneath your tongue. What does GTA stand for? GTN, glycerol trinitrate. Okay. It's actually an explosive. Wow. <laughs> okay. TNT. And what it does is it yeah. actually dilates the blood vessels in your heart. Okay. So it means that th the reason that you're mm. feeling so unwell is that you've got some sort of a blockage going on. Okay. And if it was angina, right. it's a partial blockage. Yeah. So if you imagine you've got the lumen of your blood vessel yeah. and it's clogged up with all the gunky stuff. Yeah. Um, so if it's partially blocked and you take GTN, it can actually ease it. Uh -huh. And then mm. the blood flow can go back to the heart. So it's the heart muscle saying, ah, I'm not happy. God. If it's a heart attack, yeah. what happens when you have that chunky stuff going in yeah. is that the blood flow slows right down. Uh -huh. If the blood flow slows right down, it's likely to clot. If it clots uh, in there, it can actually block the whole blood vessel right. and then that bit of heart muscle dies. I see, I see. So, if you've got GTN spray and you take it, yeah. great. If it's you start to feel better, it was a nasty angina attack, yeah. I'm going to ship you off to hospital anyway mm -hmm. um, and let's see if we can prevent mm. that happening again. If you've been prescribed a 300 milligram aspirin, mm -hmm. you would chew that. Chew the aspirin? Chew it, because it will go faster into your bloodstream. Okay. okay. And that will start breaking down that clot. I think aspirin is good for this, right? Because it, 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 what's the opposite of thickens? Um, it's thin. Yeah, it's thin. thin. <laughs> yeah, thin your blood. Thin. Yeah. <laughs> what, what a blood moment on my part there. <laughs> it thins your blood, so it just helps with the, with the circulation, right? Absolutely. Yeah. But uh, what you're doing, though, is you're actually breaking down that clot. 
Mm. So I it's see, not thinning the blood all over, yeah. it's breaking down that clot in that okay. situation right. so okay. that the blood can start flowing back into your heart. Yeah. Okay. So that's what, what you're doing. Okay. Um, mm. If you haven't been prescribed an aspirin, I'm not going to rustle in granny's handbag and fish one out sure. yeah. because if you're already on warfarin, or if you're allergic yeah. to aspirin, that's going to make things worse. Course, so have, only yeah. if you've been prescribed if you've been it. Prescribed okay. It, right. okay, you're sitting there. So, so I've, Sadly, I've never had a heart problem, never had GLN. GTN. GTN. <laughs> GTN. Um, great London Authority. And so actually, um, you were sitting at rest when this came on. Yeah. And so I've got you to phone an ambulance. Uh -huh. You're really not looking great now, I'm afraid. So. I, I look like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if yes. you were to stop breathing, uh -huh. okay. I would now need to move on to the next stage. Okay. okay. Shall I get you to move up I'll, there I'll or move up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. other way? Okay. So, so the first okay, point so if you had collapsed okay. and you're unconscious and not breathing, okay. hopefully when you had phoned the ambulance, uh -huh. you would have got a defibrillator on the way as well if you were in a public place. Okay. So we'll cover a defibrillator. Okay. But that is your life-saving bit of kit in the Excellent. community. Okay. So the, the defibrillator is basically the, the kind of, is it the, the electrical It's panels. the one like you see you on see casualty. You see the movies where they go, yeah, yeah. yeah. Beep, but this clang, is, you know, that kind of, clear, uh, that's it. Clear. Yeah. 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 This is an automated external defibrillator that talks right. to you. It talks to you, it tells you what to do, and you can't do any harm if you do it oh. unnecessarily. Okay. So I can talk you ah. through that in a bit. Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. But okay, what so I what would like you yeah. is you to, when you phone the ambulance, uh -huh. to have got, if you're in a public place, to have got a defibrillator okay. discreetly out of the way. If you're sitting there, you don't want to say, it's all right, I've got the defib. Because yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. that will raise your stress level yeah. somewhat. Just, yeah. Where would we find them in a public space? Uh, tube stations, uh -huh. railway stations, uh -huh. big hypermarkets, supermarkets. Right. A lot of schools have them now. So is that like a legal requirement all these institutions at place should have them? Or? It's not a legal right. requirement, but a duty of care comes in there. Right. Um, I, mean, I think I mentioned before, so sure. if somebody has had a cardiac arrest in a public space, you're yeah. talking 6%. If you've got a defib available, right. you're talking 74%. Sure. If wow. you can get that on the chest yeah. within that three-minute window. The difference of saving a life, right? It yeah. Could be, and yeah. every minute's yeah. delay over that three minutes is about mm. an 8 to 10% reduction in mortality. Wow. Until you get to 10 minutes and you're down to 6% again. Yeah. So that's when you're waiting for the ambulance to come. Okay. So the quicker you can get one, the better, and they mm. are available. So I've got a defib. You got a defib. For the ambulance. Okay. The He's defib's discreetly so waiting. We're not bothering with that yet. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. Right. You check for danger. Okay. Always be aware with that with first aid. Whatever you're doing, it's just an awareness that nothing's going to fall on you and sure. whatever's hurt them. We were doing heart attacks, so you were yeah. sitting calmly I'll in your sitting yeah. room. I'm not home. too. Yeah. But you started off yeah. with road traffic accidents. Sure. Let's make sure you're not hit by a car. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. You check for danger, no danger. You check for response. Speak before you touch. Okay. okay. Saves a lot of awkwardness and embarrassment, uh -huh. okay? Yeah. Speak before you touch. Um, hello, I'm Emma, I'm a first aid, are you okay? Nothing. Do a tap on the shoulder, or you could pinch the ear, or maybe the finger, mm. okay? Look all the time to see if there's even the tiniest flicker of an eyelid, Okay. okay? If there's no response at all, you then want to tilt the head and lift the chin to open the airway. Right. On one of our courses, I'll go into detail yeah. as to what you're doing and why. That bit's important. Okay. Mm. And then you put your cheek above their mouth and nose. You look down the body, you look, you listen, and you feel to see if they're breathing. And you should have at least two breaths okay. in a 10 second period. Right, okay. okay. Yep. At least. Th at least, okay. okay. So they are unconscious. And this time they are not breathing. Mm. Okay? okay. So you were unconscious and not breathing. And then, uh, okay. Yeah. And then as time's gone on, the, 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 I've stopped breathing effectively. You've stopped breathing. Stopped breathing. Okay. okay. So you're unconscious and not breathing. So what I would need to do, because you're an adult, I would need to be pushing hard and fast on the centre of the chest. Right. So right in the middle, you go from here yeah. to here, and you go in the middle there. And the heel of your hand, centre of the chest. You want to be up over the top, and you want to push down hard and fast. Okay. You were singing the song earlier. We, we oh, were saying staying it's alive. Staying alive, yeah. yeah. By the Bee Gees. Actually, that's quite a lot of force you're using there. I mean, it's, well, if it's, you think of yeah. it, you've got your ribs, yeah. and you've got your heart underneath. And what you were doing here is pushing down on the chest yeah. hard enough that you are squeezing the heart, and you're being the heart for them. Mm. That's what you're doing. 
I mean, isn't there a danger that you could crack somebody's ribs by applying If you're doing it properly, you probably will. Ah. Wow. So if you feel the ribs go, yeah. particularly if it's an elderly person, uh -huh. if you feel the ribs go, you keep going. Gosh. Wow. Yeah. You said, yeah, because... Uh, uh, well, obviously, a bone breaking yeah. doesn't kill you. Well, if a... they're alive and they're complaining yeah. of broken ribs, then naturally... That's yeah. probably a better scenario. Come on, the bus. Yeah, shall I, shall okay. I um, so let's do if, if, if I were to... So what you're saying is I've got to be right, right there. Right yeah, over so, the top. Right over the top. Heel of your hand, and you're pushing oh. down hard and fast. A bit faster. Faster. Gosh, I feel like I'm going to cure this. It actually yeah. Yeah. You've got to really put yeah. a lot of yourself into actually, it, don't gosh, you? Yeah, faster. Really... Go on, I think you need to be singing. <laughs> Staying, yeah, stay alive. Alive. Staying okay. alive. Wow. You're doing about two per second. Uh, uh, That's alive. what we want to That's be doing. Two per yep. second. One, two, go. Gosh, yeah. That's yeah. Really, you've really got to put yourself into it. Yeah. Right? Now, how long yeah. do you do this for? Um, you're going to do 30 compressions okay. to two breaths. Okay. And when breaths. you do the breath, you tilt the head, lift the chin, okay. hold the nose, you breathe in, the chest will rise. Okay? Ah, gosh, okay. So and then you go back to 30 compressions. Gosh, that's quite a lot. And I know you were asking me earlier yeah. about Vinnie Jones and whether yeah, you give the breath or not. You're not supposed to do mouth to mouth, or you, or you, you, are, you are. <laughs> yeah. If you are just doing the compressions, yeah. when an adult collapses, yeah. they have about, depends what's happened, but three to four minutes worth of oxygenated blood in their system. Yeah. OK, so when you are pushing on the chest, you are circulating that oxygenated blood. Yeah. However, after that three to four minutes, you're circulating deoxygenated blood. Right. Which isn't right. as useful to them. Of course. Yeah. So that is why the breaths are still important, that you breathe in till you re-oxygenate them, and mm. then you go back. There's the, the, the interesting point, obviously, on the mouth to mouth, you made an interesting point. You gave us a little, um, was this the item here? That for those who don't necessarily want to... Go mouth to mouth. They yep. can put. Uh, well, we can get you, this out. You right get here. it out. You can out. use it. And, and and you can use this for especially for those. I mean, obviously, it's, it's a life saving matter. It's a face shield. Mm -hmm. it's a, a face, face shield, shield. Right. It's not very nice giving mouth to mouth. Yeah. Um, and um, so they're, they're also they they might have vomited too. Um, ah. Yeah. Yeah. So it literally, you just put that over. You put that over the top ah, there, I and see. then you can breathe in through there. And, and you have to be means, careful, I imagine, because you could, yeah. you know. Cause you may suffocate them or? No, because you've still got, you're still breathing through your mouth. You can breathe uh, through your mouth, course. you can breathe through your nose. Of course you can, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's just giving you a nice bit of distance. Yeah. So that if you are having to resuscitate, that you haven't got that, oh, it's really not very yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, that's an excellent alternative, especially for some of the Muslim yeah. brothers and sisters who might be yeah, watching. Absolutely. That is quite useful to them as well. Absolutely. Uh, listen, we're going to come back, we're going to continue yep. this momentarily. Okay. Yep. Um, but that is fascinating absolutely. stuff absolutely. right now. Live, live. Back to living the life. Before the break, we were talking with Emma Hammett, who demonstrated how to do first aid. First In fact, that aid. was CPR first that we just CPR learned. CPR practical. CPR. That, that, that was very, very useful. Very. That's useful. right. And, and, and you've got two young lads. With you. I've got two young lads. <laughs> two young Obviously, <laughs> CPR. It's not just for adults. It's also for uh, for children. For and children we'll learn a little well. bit more about that in a second. Right. Right. Okay. Mm. Now I want to I want to get the, straight back into this. Interesting. We've got the kids mm. right now. Um, the, it's obviously it's different to give CPR to from an adult to a child. Yeah. Emma, how do you give CPR to a child? Okay. Well, whereas we said with adults that they have three to four minutes worth of oxygenated blood in their system. Uh -huh. Babies and children don't have that. So babies and children will need rescue breaths first okay, to re-oxygenate okay. them. Okay. So you would tilt the head okay. just to horizontal for a baby. Okay. Just to horizontal. Just to okay. horizontal. Uh, obviously, ideally, you wouldn't be doing this on your lap, but for yeah. the purpose of today, you would. So on a firm surface, normally, on the okay. floor is best. And horizontal, and their little lungs are the size of a tea bag. Oh, wow. So a puff of your cheeks in, they're clean and ready to go, so put your just mouth over their mouth and nose uh -huh. and do a puff in to okay. them. So just a, and you'll see the chest rise. Go okay. for it. Do, do for five quick breaths. Well. Yep. Okay. Go five quick breaths in. Five quick breaths yep. in. Okay, cool. All right, okay. we're manipulating the baby as we move yep. them around. Yep. Do five quick breaths. <laughs> yeah, and oh, the yeah, chest right. should yeah. rise. Okay, yeah. but yeah. again, ideally, you would be going down to them. Right. And then for a baby, you would do... Two thumbs or okay. two fingers, okay. center of the chest, okay. and you're pushing down by a third of the depth. So, a same rate. Like this? Yet yeah, harder. Much harder. Much harder. harder. Okay. Because wow. again, you want to squish, squish down. Okay? Yeah. Okay. 30 and compressions kind of to two breaths. Because obviously there's a bit of a. Or is that just because of the, the windpipe that we uh, the, the, uh, Not yeah. quite like that, right. but, but yes. And don't forget, always on a firm surface. Yeah. For a child, you would be using the heel of your hand. Again, okay. you'd start with five breaths, tilt the head, lift the chin, hold the nose, five breaths in, the chest will rise each time, and the heel of your hand over the top, and you push down. 
by a third of the depth. Wow. Okay? And again, 120 beats per minute, 30, and then back to two breaths, 30 to two, 30 to two, 32. You've got an ambulance on the way, and you keep going for as long as you can. Okay. I know we're running low on time, and you wanted me to show you Just the defibs. Just as quick as you can. Yeah. Quickly as I can. I would love to come back if ever you want to. I oh, would love to. Come back. <laughs> yeah. And then a little bit more. Okay. So defibrillators. Defibrillator. Defibrillator. Fibrillator. Your heart is fibrillating, which means it's quivering. Okay. Yeah. So that's what's happening. And what the defib does is it doesn't jump start the heart like yeah. jump starting a car. It stops it. Okay. Ah. So it stops it yeah. so that your backup system, the heart has got so many backups, yeah. the backup system kicks into place. Right. So that's right. what it's doing. It's saying stop quivering yeah. around, let's get it back, let's get it working again. Okay. So on TV, you watch it and they've got the little trace that's going right. along and yeah. then it gets to beep and then they put the defib on. Yeah. Okay. If you've got to steal, you've got nothing. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm. So you switch it on. It tells you what to do. You apply the pads. Oh, so it's just a stick on pad. Stick on pad, stick it on. If they're very hairy, you might want to just take off the excess. Okay? Stick them on. And all the time, you are doing your compressions. So you're doing your compressions as you go. You stick it on. Okay? I'm still doing my compressions. It's interesting, you, you put one pad on the side, I just thought both would go on the chest. You've got the chest, the shock's going across the heart, your heart ah, is here. Ah, right. Okay. So it's saying stop. And then that would give So it's saying that they're in ventricular fibrillation or ventricular tachycardia, which are shockable rhythms. Yeah. If they weren't, you would carry on doing CPR. So it will only let you shock if they need it. They go, stand clear, push the button, they would jump. Pause. And that's Start it. CPR. Start CPR. Start CPR. Straight back oh, again. Yeah. 30 compressions to two breaths. Extraordinary. Okay. Well, Emma, Emma, we, we have run out of time. Thank <laughs> you so much. That's been that so was, intense. It really has. Yeah. It really has. I'm afraid yeah. that's all we've got time for tonight. A huge thank you yeah. to Emma. Uh, Emma. Before you go, um, if people want to get in touch and find out a little bit more about First Aid, how do Absolutely. they do it? Absolutely. We've got lots of free resources on our website www.firstaidforlife.org.uk We've also got free courses on onlinefirstaid.com so internationally anyone can get hold of them www.onlinefirstaid.com Thanks, Excellent. Thank you Fantastic. so much, Emma, and thank you uh, for, you to, uh, for attending this evening and helping uh, teach us so much. And uh, thanks, of course, to our audience for tuning in, as always. Of course, it doesn't end there. Stay with us on Twitter at Islam Channel, hashtag LTL, and on Facebook.com forward slash the Islam Channel. Plus, don't forget, you can watch your favorite clips again via YouTube.com slash Islam Channel TV. And be sure to email us the stories and community champions on LTL at Islam Channel TV. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 p.m. But from us, Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>